Hey guys, um, welcome to another video. Um, I'm deciding to make this into a series, the beginning airbrushing stuff, from buying an airbrush and uh, the basics of using it and stuff like that. So in the next uh, couple of weeks you'll see uh, release videos about that and hopefully I'll help you guys out. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me to make videos about uh, you know certain things, about how to use it and stuff like that, how to get started out with it. So I think I'll just go ahead and make a series of it because there's so much you can fit in a 15 minute time frame as well in between videos I'll be making a uh, round robin videos which I will take comments or suggestions that you guys have posted in the video comments or mail me with it or talk to me over vent or the phone uh, about questions and stuff and I'll stick these in the videos because you know uh, to cover the stuff I've missed or to answer any questions that uh, would help everyone else out Okay, I'm going to try to start out uh, the videos now with uh, a round robin uh, session, which is basically taking the questions and comments and suggestions posted on the comments of my last videos or uh, from conversations that people uh, mailed me, and uh, we'll discuss it here because there are some important points that I might have missed. Model Man Tom, this is from the scale modeling side of things. Um, he posted excellent overview, dude. Three hundred fifty dollars for a setup is way too much money eBay TCP Global dual action brush and a compressor with three gallon tank is a hundred and thirty dollars ship. These are generic brushes that work awesome without paying for brand logos. I swear by them unless I'm gonna go up to five hundred ultra wonderful brush. Brand names are a waste of money. PS to anyone reading this, never waste money on cans of air, just throw the cash down on a compressor. It's the same price as a dozen cans of air, okay? So um Let's talk about this a little now. I couldn't uh, back up the uh, airbrushes that uh, TCP Global includes in their sets because I've never used them. Uh, they're generic, so I'm a little wary on generic stuff because of the stuff that I've heard about, the horror stories and stuff. But if Model Man Tom backs it up, then I'm going to have to include this as a recommendation. Now, I went and uh, looked a little bit more. He bought this a few years ago, so the prices did go up. So the TCP Global um, set, and this is a very good point. You don't have to spend three hundred fifty dollars. You can actually spend under two hundred, you know, uh, including shipping. Um, I calculated the, the the set that he's talking about, which looks like a really good set, will cost you around a hundred and probably seventy dollars at the most, including the shipping. Now um, he also mentioned that uh, never waste money on cans of air. And that is a very good point too. I've I've um, put out the Optimum out there only because I did start with that, and um, it did work. Problem is, is um, there's a couple of uh, problems here. First of all, he's right. Um, cans of air, you buy like um, 10 cans, 12 cans, uh, and then you can get yourself uh, a compressor. So it's better to just get the damn compressor because in the long run, it will eat up your money. Second, um, not very much control uh, with the air coming out of the cans. A lot of the techniques and stuff with airbrushing, which you will find out if you ever get into it or have gotten into it, is that you have to control your PSI's, you have to control the pressure of the air that's coming out of your um, airbrush. Mo Billy said, reminder, be sure to get an oilless compressor. Even with the trap on the outlet, you will get um, oil particles passed through the airbrush. A moisture trap isn't a necessity. You must keep the air to the airbrush clean. Spend a few bucks and get a good trap good freaking point. Um, something I've uh, m missed on the uh, last video is that um, compressors do come in oilless and oil type of engines. The oil type of engines yeah, it's actually ran um, with oil in the engine just to make it uh, make the parts movable. Now there are compressors out there that are oilless. Okay, Most of the compressors you find out there like uh, the name brands like Smart and stuff, they've um, are usually all oilless uh, compressors, but that's something that uh, you should keep in mind. He also mentioned a moisture trap is a necessity, and uh, for compressors, yes, it is a good idea to get a moisture trap uh, if the if the compressor doesn't already come with it. The moisture trap looks like something like this, and it has a dial on it, as well as a meter to show uh, how much psi is coming out of your um, compressor. 
Girl Painting writes, I have the TC20T and I can highly recommend it. Well, there you go. If Girl Painting recommends it, then that's another good uh, backup there for that compressor there. The other thing that a pressure tank provides is that the pulse from the compressor itself is gone and the air comes out very smooth. Now, she's right there too. One of the reasons to get a tank is that um, sometimes some compressors are built in the way that it pulses out air because it's pistons, right? In the way it's pistons, and when it's pumping, it pumps up the air like this, pop, 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 like this. Um, some of the compressors uh, do that. More latest technologies, you don't it. It's less, right? You can barely tell. Um, the whole reason with this compressor is that it goes through a coil hose. It also prevents the pulsations, and then getting going through the trap here. Um, even lessens it because this trap is designed to lessen the pulsation. By the time it gets out to your airbrush, you barely even see it. But sometimes there's some setups or some compressors that do do such um, noticeable pulsations that your paint will come out pulsed. So when you're spraying, it's not one smooth um, spray. It pulses out the paint, and then you'll get a really weird effect. Viper 29CA says a couple other things. One of the other advantages of gravity feed versus siphon feed airbrush the gravity feed airbrush will generate uh, required less air generally require less air pressure to push out the paint whereas you need slightly higher air pressure to in a siphon feed to draw paint into the airbrush body this will result in being able to achieve finer lines with gravity feed as well with a co2 tank you eliminate the need for moisture trap as a co2 setup won't get air in it like a compressor wear will okay um that is a good point. Uh, gravity feed, the whole point about gravity feed is the paint uses, you know, natural gravity to drop the paint into the airbrush. Um, on a, a siphon feed, which is the bottom feed that I showed you in the last um, uh, video, is that uh, it requires the air to pull the paint into the airbrush. Okay, so if you don't have a really good compressor or if you're using those can air, um, a um, top feed or a gravity feed is uh, better for you in the long run. Uh, he said as, well, the CO tank you eliminate the need for moisture trap. That is completely true. There is no moisture that comes out of CO2 tanks, and um, you eliminate the need uh, for a moisture trap. But, however, uh, even if you have a tank on your um, compressor, uh, mostly with a uh, compressor with tanks in it, they already come with a moisture trap. Um, I believe you still need it because it pushes moisture into the tank, and the tank comes out. Now, I'm not completely sure on that. Someone could verify that. Okay, Viper29CA says, you can adjust the spray pattern on a single action airbrush by adjusting the needle in and out manually so you, you aren't just stuck with one spray pattern. Completely and totally forgot about this. Um, I haven't used a single action in ages, so I completely forgot about this. In a single action airbrush, I see here, okay, um, you can adjust the needle pulling in and out um, by adjusting the... Uh, adjustment here, the screw here, and that will control the fine line of the spray. Um, if you notice, I don't know if you can see it on the air, um, on the camera here, on the dual action here, when I'm pulling the trigger back, it pulls the uh, needle back, and that's how it adjusts the um, width of the spray, and that's pretty much how you do it with a single action uh, airbrush. Now, the problem with that is, in a single action airbrush, to adjust the spray, you have to, you know, mess with the screw here, you have to stop adjust and then spray again um, so I that's the reason why I only suggest a dual action because dual action you could do it you know real time and you get some cool effects out of that and some techniques on that now on some airbrushes like this cheap one here um, you can adjust it by adjusting the amount of paint that comes out uh, of the tip here by you know screwing it on and yeah, screwing it left and right now, uh, Oftazone said, have you seen the airbrushes with regulars built into them? No, I haven't, but that would be kind of cool, but I'm not sure how, exactly how that would work. I have a Badger Crescendo 175, I bought it back in early 90s, fired it up maybe twice, got two compressors with one tank, both loud as heck, cannot be used in an apartment. Years ago, I have seen two gallon tanks that can be filled up in a gas station, looking to find one of those again. Now, that is probably a CO2 tank set up. Um, I don't know if gas station actually sells CO2. I've never seen that before. I had to go to the industrial stuff here in L.A. Uh, so if the gas station does fill up CO2, that's so cool. That's more convenient to uh, bring your tank there. Now, the problem is, is I know gas station fills up propane. Okay? Do not use propane. Okay, 
unless you want to blow yourself up, uh, that's not a good idea. Now, for tanks, you could just, like I said, you could find any tanks that you could actually buy, take it to the industrial place or gas station, and they'll fill it up for you for a certain amount of price. So you don't have to actually lease the tank. But buying a tank is pretty expensive too. Also, I have some pictures that I just showed or am showing right now, and they're pretty tanks, right? You can get one of those tanks, uh, high quality tanks. Also, another thing that I just remembered is tanks have a expiration date. You have to switch out a tank after a certain uh, while, uh, after a certain number of years, and uh, get a new one, or they won't fill it up. Okay, now here's some other notes about. Um, using CO2 tanks. Um, it is a viable and really good option uh, as opposed to getting an air compressor, though it can get pricey. Um, you could actually have a really cool CO2 tank setup where you could like get maybe like uh, two 25 pound tanks and they'll be about that high, right? And you just get two of them, right? And then you could uh, just switch them out. When one runs out, switch it out so that you can still have air and then take the other one to the uh, get it refilled whenever you have time. So that's, you could really rig up some really cool systems. Um, and as well, it's some, you're going to get this question as to where would you refill these uh, tanks. Now, uh, as mentioned, uh, you could, I guess you could do them at some gas stations and make sure it's CO2, not propane. Okay, but if you don't, your gas stations don't have CO2 uh, tanks to fill up. Uh, you could check out play, uh, industrial places. Go to Google and Google CO2 tank uh, refills, and then you will find a lot of places near you, uh, industrial places that uh, will refill your tanks. As well, you could go to uh, paintball hobby shops. Um, if you guys have ever done uh, paintballing or know a paintball place, they refill CO2 tanks. Uh, and some fish uh, stores as well uh, will refill uh, CO2 tanks because uh, fish in the fish aquarium and hobby uh, you use CO2 to uh, keep the plants alive. So those are the places where you can get uh, your CO2 tanks refilled. All right, so that's it. Um, thank you for joining me in this video here. I'll put up more videos uh, to cover the airbrushing and stuff like that. And also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this video, post it in the comments below or mail me and I'll try to get it into the next uh, round robin uh, in the next video. So that's it. Uh, subscribe, like, and all that other bullshit for YouTube and uh, that's it. I'll see you out there. For more tutorial videos on how to paint your figures, check out Les's channel at Awesome Paint Job. For cool terrain tips and tutorials, check out Chris at Terrain Noob.